All right, so the very first thing that we're going to do in our Arduino is we're going to open up the very first example. And so if we go up here to File and Examples and scroll down to the Tetrix Prism, we're going to open up this blank red LED. This is the basic Hello World challenge, uh, where most computers would either blink an LED light on and off, which is what we're going to do that's actually on the Prism box, or on the computer it would actually say Hello World. Um, so this code is already loaded for you so let's just take a look at it so you can understand kind of how it goes the very first thing that's going to happen is you type this in this activates the prism library so to speak this gets things going um, and it gets as you can see here it starts to connect to the prism itself to the actual device so we can start to program it so it understands and all we're really doing it's just starting things. So here's our initializer. We're going to get it set up to, so that, that the Prism controller knows that it's time to go. And once we get it up and running, we've got a basic loop right here. It's super simple. Um, the difference with, between Prism and regular Arduino coding, for those that have Arduino coding, this is something that um, has been a bit of a learning curve or just in terms of remembering for those that have Arduino experience, is to remember to add this Prism dot before you do anything. Uh, and so we've got prism dot set red LED on high because as if you know or don't know LEDs it's either a one or a zero so it's either high or low meaning that it's going to turn it on or it's going to turn it off. So we've got it set to turn on as you can see here in the notes. Then we've got a delay of a thousand and Arduino uses milliseconds so one thousand is equal to one second. So it's going to keep it on for one second. Then it's going to power it off for one second. And it's going to loop and just keep doing this over and over again. And when you have that, you get to see basically the Hello World mission. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So what you always want to do is just click to verify. It's going to work. should work because it's coming straight from Pitsco itself. You can see that it's good to go. We're going to click this next arrow to upload, which means now we're going to be sending it to the brick itself, which is right here, which is right here. Now we've got a red and green button down here. Red resets or stops and green is start. So if I turn, hit this red button, we should start seeing the red blinking light. So this is gonna start the program. And now you can see it blinking right here. Red light high one second, red light low or off for one second, back and forth. And it'll keep doing this forever until the battery dies or if I just hit the stop button. There, there it is. Now the beauty with this is showing kids this. So in my classroom, if I were to teach this to a class of, of 30 kids, I would give them this code. And then we would talk about a variety of different things. Okay, are there any other LED lights that we see? And hopefully they would start to recognize, well, wow, there's a green one right there. So maybe we could make that happen and do something with that. Could we make the green blink? Could we go red and green back and forth? And then we could start to build into real world connections, having them think about what's something in the world that utilizes lights? What's something in the world that utilizes um, blinking or the navigation of different lights? And have them think about it, brainstorm, and we would go through the computational design thinking process and have them start to maybe code something really simple and explain why. Um, the other things that you can start to do then is start to talk about well, how does the LED light work? Electricity, because a lot of kids don't have any working concept. They do a lot of this with just actual LEDs and coin cell batteries, but here's a great way to use this and maybe step off and use something else just as, as a breaking off point. Um, the other things that you can get into, what I start to see is the next extension, because some kids are going to fly through this. It's a very introductory type meeting. Um, and lesson is to get them understanding this language, understanding what goes on with the prism. But the next thing would be to create their own program or file. Um, just using these basic features like we've talked about. And that's what I think is the beauty of this prism, is you can show something to make them understand, model a mentor, but then the po possibilities and potential are really unlimited. Here, it's nothing real fancy because it's all built in with these lights. But down the road, you start adding sensors and motors, things can get going pretty awesome. And so you could just do another program. So here's the green LED. It's the exact same code, except for I just went to set green. So I'll go ahead and upload this. And then when I run this, you can see. 
All right, so we'll go ahead and verify this to make sure everything is, is good to go. Only thing I changed was from set red LED, I just made it set green LED. Okay, we'll go ahead and upload that. It's uploading. It's done uploading, so now we should have a green blinking light. So there you go. Something pretty simple, low level, build some confidence. Hopefully, what will come away with kids is, well, I want to do this, and I want to do this. Why can't I add motors? I want to add sensors. Now we've got them. We've got them right where we want them. So this is a hello world. Very simple lesson. Let's jump into the next one and see what's the next step. What else can we do? What happens if we start plugging some bad boys in, get some motors and servos and, and sensors and things up and running? Check out the next tutorial.